Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this tutorial, we are going to dive into one of my favorite modes or scales, if you want to call it that, the Dorian, the Dorian mode or the Dorian scale. I've used it a lot in my music. I've used it a lot in my classes. I tend to prefer this among all the other scales with a minor third, as as we'll talk about later in the theory. Now, what we are going to do here is is hopefully help you to compose music to develop chord progressions, melodies, and also practice them on the piano or pretty much any instrument and hopefully grow as a producer, a composer, and an arranger. And this scale is very useful if you want to create some new stuff, some new cutting-edge music, which no one has really heard because it's not major or minor, which is what most people compose on. It's a very film score kind of scale. You'll find it in a lot of movie theme scores, uh, You'll find it in a lot of brave songs, in a, in a lot of rock songs, and in a lot of songs where it, the perspective is one to many. It's one person trying to write to the whole world. Maybe this song. Where Michael Jackson is just trying to tell all of us to stop polluting the earth and things like that in Earth Song. So generally speaking, the scale is used for a brave kind of sound. It's used for the rock genre, the funk genre, the blues genre. It's used a lot in fusion music. A lot of Indian music, whether it's Carnatic or Hindustani, seems to use this mode a lot. And we also use it in jazz. We use this sometimes more often than even the natural minor scale or the harmonic minor scale. We prefer the Dorian more at times. Now before we get started, it'll be really nice if you get your keyboards out, get a book out, so you could perhaps perhaps write down the chord progressions and the essential theory also pianos to help you play as i slow down a lot of the melodies we've also notated a bunch of these melodies for you all of these are my compositions or riffs as we release them as you'll find them as a full video on youtube the links will be in the description you can check it out and i'm going to brainstorm those compositions so it'll also be easy for me to teach one being I have made it so I can tell you what was going on in my head what was I thinking as I was writing that kind of music so before we get started it'll be great if you could consider hitting the subscribe button hit the bell icon for regular notifications and the notes and the note the chord charts and a lot more are waiting for you on patreon not just for this lesson but for a lot of the other lessons let's get cracking so let's first get the theory stuff out of the way the dorian scale let's take the key of d so any dorian scale would be a flat three as well as a flat seven with respect to the major scale or with respect to the natural minor scale, you raise the 6. So usually when we notate it on sheet music, for example, you're notating D Dorian, all your Bs would be written as B natural in your notation scripts because staff notation tends to support only the major and the minor, the major and the relative minor. Even for harmonic minor, you'll have to put a sharp. That's why they say the 7 is raised in harmonic minor. In the Dorian, the 6 is raised. So this would be natural. This would be the natural minor where you flat the 3rd, you flat the 6 and you flat the 7 with Dorian. You raise the 6. Versus the more melancholic, the more pensive minor. Dorian's a lot more brave. To me, whenever I use it from a story perspective, it's it's always a weaker force from their perspective, trying to, you know, fight or, you know, be part of or take down a stronger force. It's always a brave scale to me. I hear this a lot in movies. And with the movies I watch, it's generally some battle going on or some fight. So... Right? So, Dorian has a flat 3 and a flat 7. The 6 is normal, left alone. Or with respect to the natural minor, you... Play it just like a natural minor, but raise the 6. Not that, this one. So that's your Dorian in there. 
Now coming to the chords of the Dorian. To harmonize the Dorian, we have one minor, a two minor, a three flat major. We actually play around with them. You get a very funky kind of sound. Very jazzy if you add the sevens or the nines, you know. There we go. So anyway, moving back to the triads, one minor, two minor, three flat major, four major. It's the only minor sounding scale which has a four major. All the others, the natural, the harmonic, well not the melodic, melodic also has a four major. You have a one minor going to the four major. So this is a very important cadence as we call it in the Dorian, the four to the one. That's the four cadence going to the one. Okay, and then we have our five minor. Okay, so one minor. So far we have one minor, two minor, three flat major, four major, five minor. Then you have your six diminished. You need to remember that in the Dorian scale. One, two, three, four, five. The six is always diminished. We rarely use it though. But it's there. And then you have your 7 flat major. So which are the major chords in the Dorian scale? The 4, the 3 flat and the 7 flat. So just off the top, if you want to get a very brave sound, you can just imagine a story which starts off by being pretty sad. So you have your minor bass. You're setting the bass as your tonic minor and then there's a bit of hope developed there with the four major. And then you can just do a four to one cadence and you pretty much have the essence of the Dorian. Making it very different from both major and minor, which I think is very important when you're learning a new skill. This is the cadence. And then we can gang up some of the other major chords. That's your three flat. D minor, and then you have a very nice rock progression. There we go. That's your one minor, three flat major, seven flat major and then your form major. However, you can even do some minor to minor stuff. Like I showed you for the doors stuff, you can also do two minors and then end with a major. That gives you a very brave sound, you know. It's pretty much the word I'm going to use a lot in this lesson because that's what the scale means to me. Five minor, four major. And then if you want some more positivity, go to the three flat major, seven flat major, and then end with your four major. Right? So this is about the Dorian scale and the reason I really love this scale is first of all that brave mood or that brave emotion and it also is a very, from a perspective of songwriting, you write these kind of join my cult or clan kind of songs. It's, it's you against them kind of a thing. You're always against the system, so to speak, with this scale. And even if you take the lyrics of some of these songs, you know, by Imagine Dragons, we have the song Radioactive. So if you read the lyrics, it's very, you know, against the system or what Michael Jackson will do in Earth Song. He, it's a one to many. He's not even using lyrics in Earth Song at the chorus. He's just going. <laughs> it's kind of obvious that the scale itself or the chords the chord progression of the scale is giving you the mood which Michael Jackson wanted you to feel, right, in Earth Song. So most of the Dorian 
songs or the Dorian compositions are composed from a one-to-many perspective to kind of join my cult, join my group. We are against the system. We are the weaker force against the stronger force. It gives me that kind of a vibe. It also has a very mystical touch to it if you use it in a more textural way or a more atmospheric way. Like you're discovering a new world kind of a thing. Very mysterious. So it depends also on the rhythm, how you use it. The chords could be the same. So this has some very interesting themes which a major and minor scale are never going to give you. Major and minor scales are more personal and more discreet. It's very happy, positive or very sad. There's nothing in between. The Dorian is that brave in between scale. And it... And a cousin scale of the Dorian is a, is the Mixolydian, which I hope to cover in a, in another video as well. So do check out the Mixolydian tutorials too. So what I'm going to do moving forward in this lecture is play for you a few compositions and let's try and learn those melodies on the piano and then let's try and understand the chord progression. So in a nutshell, you need to know the chord theory of the Dorian, which happens to be the one minor, the 2 minor, the 3 flat major, the 4 major, 5 minor, the 6 diminished, the 7 flat major and finally the 1. Okay, so we have a few pieces for you which we've notated also for piano. We learn them and we'll also dive into and study what chord progressions are used in the, in the section of the song. And if you want to listen to the whole thing, you can consider visiting my Riffs website which is riffs.jasonzackmusic.com. What will happen there is you have filters. You can filter to Dorian, which is the mode. We have a filter there and you can filter it and all these riffs will pop up and you can even key in the, the riff name or anything there. And we have a nice little story which can kind of inspire you or motivate you to learn it. And with all the riffs, there's a slow version. So stay tuned after you watch it. At the end, there's a slow version. So you can learn that on the piano. And we are also introducing backing tracks for these riffs. If you want to kind of make them your own, you can write to us. And we will also have this on the website very shortly. So let's dive into some Dorian music. Right? So in this rather energetic, brave rock song, it's on G. G Dorian. So let's try and break this down now. So it's on G Dorian and So what I'm doing here in this melody is I'm just hovering with D G D G D G F E D G D G D G D G F E D and I'm making sure that there's an E there that so when you're composing a Dorian riff or a Dorian melody, try to keep in mind that you need to have that six natural. I didn't do. That would have made it minor. And you can hear a huge difference, I guess. And even if you play G, it still feels Dorian. You don't need chords to make it Dorian. It's just the melody alone will make it sound that way and to add some Dorian chords you can fool around here you can say 1 minor G minor I did a 3 flat major then I like to always do my 4 major <clears throat> makes it very epic and very brave If you want to learn this melody, you could check it out in the notation. We have it there for you. So let's try and listen to a few more brave sounding riffs and try and dive into the chord progressions. Dorian where I'm not using too many chords I'm just moving so this is another approach for the Dorian where I'm not using a chord progression I'm just using thirds 
and I'm droning, just droning that D there. And if ever you add a new bass note, try and add it lower and lower on, and then you can kind of compose further. It's on the F Dorian. So here I'm doing a three flat. And then a three flat, and then a seven flat. Let's break that down on the F Dorian key. F minor would be your one, three flat would be A flat, and then E flat would be your seven flat. It's a more kind of a ambient rock kind of sound, you know. And then F minor, A flat, da 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 de. And what I like about these sort of compositions, if I start with Dorian, I can kind of simulate in a song which which has two sections. Let's say an A and a B. This could be the A. And go to the B. Make it major, you know. Make it very positive, or you can even drift to minor. Maybe with brave, you're going into the battle, and you either kind of end up victorious or you end up defeated. So it creates a story with an A and a B section. So let's look at another Dorian riff, which is a bit more rock sounding. So that's G sharp Dorian. Flat, ending on that four major, three flat. Let's try and break that down. So the G sharp Dorian. So that's one minor, three flat major, and then you have your seven flat major, and then ending on that four major, which I always like to end on. Anyone who makes Dorian likes to kind of do a one minor going to a four major. So the melody I have over that is let's learn that maybe a bit higher. Again. Again. So let's now do chords in the left hand with an arpeggio pattern. It's on three four. This is the arpeggio pattern. A nice three by four go to pattern melody. Let's move on. B flat Dorian. Let's try and learn. I'll start with the chords. So it's on B flat Dorian, B flat minor, uh, uh, F minor, B flat minor. Okay, that's ta na 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 na. One, two, three, four. At the four, I'm playing an F minor, B flat minor, D flat major. 
which is a three flat major ta na 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 and i'm ending it with a four major but i'm suspending it to give it a bit more interest so ta re 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 ra 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 ta ra 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 ta re re ra ro ta ra re ra 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 tu ro 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 ra ra ida with the piano going on with the melody maybe some block chords in the left hand let's learn it d flat again d flat you could even do roots nicely to the next section that's f f dorian that's one minor three flat major four major and there's an interesting chord here which i'll show you now a flat b flat f e flat over g b flat f minor B flat F the G bass so that's F minor that's one minor three flat major and then a four major and then we do I like this for Dorian as well so that's a two with a E flat slash G. So E flat slash G in the key of F Dorian would be a seven flat major over a G. It's a slash chord, so it gives you a lot more bite. It makes it a lot more. It pulls. It, it's a lot more tense, so to speak. And there's a lot of hope in this chord. I feel when you land it. So. listen to a full song which i have composed with this progression you can check out redemption from one of my earlier albums we we'll leave that in the description so this is more of a kind of a fusion riff i would say because it has a a very rooted d at least in the a section and the melody is giving the dorian and a nice turn around there which i'll show you let's try and learn that so it's on the d dorian and i'm playing tara tare taro tera tara re ro tera ra ra ta just a d in the bass would be nice till you get acquainted last time tero 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 pera ru da just with a d and when you play this d drone for a long while when you play a chord like na re that's a g over b ta re ta ra ta re now i did a b flat there so i'm kind of using the 6 dorian and then kind of sliding it to the 6 flat which is a borrowed note it's a borrowed chord making it even more uplifting da da re 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 and then back to dorian minor let's do that again then tano te ra that's g over b ta ra ta ra te the borrowed chord b flat which is not part of this dorian but it comes back to the d minor pretty well right b dorian a little l 
kick in that Let's try and break that So the lick was can even do that climb that c sharp or a major over c sharp right so a lot of these epic brave sounding riffs which could be of any genre i guess this could be treated like a fusion song and uh, <clears throat> the dorian seems to work very well for this stuff so that's a four and one cadence dorian cadence so four major one minor i chose this it's very easy to hear the dorian and a nice that 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 nice swinging kind of rhythm okay a bit folk like let's break that down four going to one minor some weird notes there and to them you hear the whole composition i think it's pretty cool you might like it it's on our riff website this is on a rather odd time signature 1234561045 you call this as a 6x4 the drummer and the bass player went crazy in this one it was a pleasure to make this song with the blessing chimanga band all the way from zimbabwe we collaborate with different artists from time to time so this is e flat dorian just simple let me just show you what's going on there uh it goes and they do a nice harmony we play this together bringing out that dorian as a twin lead la ra re ra re ra ra te ra re ra re ra dum te ra re ra re de pam pam pa pam pam pa that will be a three flat going to a uh, three flat major going to the usual dorian major which is the four major what you will find very often with uh, funky stuff is you go from a one minor to a four major and you can make those chords a bit more sophisticated with seventh extensions one minor seventh and the four dominant seventh let's break that down this is how i'm playing the one minor seventh a flat to the d flat and this is how i'm playing the d flat dominant so If you're having a problem playing seventh chords, you can do what I do, which is the root in the left hand, remaining notes in the right hand, and you can easily glide to the dominant there. So, so just vamping with a. one minor and a 4 7 or a 4 major 4 dominant 7th would be very funky you can compose a lot of things let's kind of uh, take it to the key of d and a couple of other keys just to show you this funky option <clears throat> that's a d minor 7 going to a g dominant We will be doing a, a few funky videos as well on just the funk genre so do stay tuned and follow our channel you might want to hit that subscribe button that will be pretty helpful to find our lessons okay moving on
Yet another example which I do. With this, I have kind of made the chords a bit more sophisticated. Last time I showed you sevens. This time these are nines and thirteens and all those jazz extensions. So what did I do do here? Da da de. That's a G minor nine. That's your nine. De do de. De de. That's a G minor ninth. Going to this rather sophisticated C thirteenth sound. That's your thirteenth there because you have a flat seven, you have a ninth also. It's a nice way to play a C thirteenth. There's a lot of bass which goes on in funk music. We leave that for another tutorial. Right, moving on to some bluesy and some r&b soulful stuff we can't forget those genres let's do a couple of those and then sign off so this is very inspired by the doors they do this a lot the one minor and the two minor it just toggles between So that's pretty much what you do. You just take a C minor and then a D minor. You can embellish it with seventh chords. So that's one minor seventh, two minor seventh. Pretty easy. Just one and two. This is something bluesy on the key of D. So you have that tritone which makes it bluesy, but you sneak in the Dorian. So this is an example which you can understand the use of the Dorian in a very blues riff or a lick kind of context. So if you take that's pretty bluesy, but but adding that braveness of the the Dorian, we can bring in the G major and toggle it very quickly back to the home. Used a lot by Pink Floyd. I'm sure you know the songs. Pink Floyd uses it almost. I've actually, stolen this from guitar players. Pink Floyd. Check them out if you haven't already. So in this tutorial, I've tried to go over a few of my compositions on the Dorian mode, and you'll find all these compositions available, catalogued very well on our Riffs website. Do check it out in the description or in the comments and. You don't have to just find this. You can filter and filter by anything. You can even filter by emotion. Maybe you want a riff which is adventurous, or you want to search for it without the musical words, with some more English, easy to understand words like brave. Brave will actually be there, and we have a lot of other ways to select the riffs from a more musical metadata perspective. You can find it by time signature, by time feel. By scale, by key. If you are a singer, you can find it. And like I said earlier, these will be available very shortly for you to download and use into your in your own productions using a DAW of your choice. It will be available in a drag and drop kind of way. So have fun with that. And moving forward, we will try and do a lot more of these uh, riff breakdowns, as a lot of you have requested for it in the comments. And do check out the daily riffs which get released as well by hitting that subscribe and hitting the bell icon for regular notifications you'll be notified because we release one every day pretty much around the same time so try and listen to it and give give the channel your support <clears throat> thanks a ton for watching the video cheers and catch you in the next one